it's been a while martin shumba here back with another sit down with the martin shumba music family uh i hope you have all been doing well and uh yeah first things first i would like to thank each and every one of you who's been uh, streaming my music and uh, liking subscribing sharing you know uh, ever since the last song that we released um, the reason why I've done this interview is just to give uh, you perhaps an outline or a view from my perspective uh, regarding to the present stage of my ministry uh, I haven't quite talked about it in depth in terms of how we began and uh, the junctions that we've had to go through uh, up until this moment. Yeah, it all began with um, with a song. I think for those who were there at the beginning, the song was Bring Them In. And when I really started out, it wasn't really um, something that I thought would blossom into what it is now. I thought it was just me, you know, releasing a song. Yeah, because uh, I was at a convention, a youth convention. It was around 2019. And during one of the services, I just felt that, you know, that push inside of me to say, let me just do a song and see how it goes, right? So initially, it was all just about one song. I didn't imagine that I would be where I am now uh, in terms of music. And then, yeah, that's the way we began. And after that one song, you know, the feedback that we got really was encouraging. Yeah, but still at that point, it wasn't really something that I thought could be anything more than what it was. And then uh, my pastor, Pastor Saidi, encouraged me you know just to keep pushing and uh you know exploring into that ministry and i ended up making an album my first album i still believe yeah and wow the reception was great as well for that album so at that time yeah i was getting more used to the idea that this could actually be something that I do right and not just a, a once-off thing because after the initial single I released I think two more and then after the album I realized that this is actually something now that can uh, blossom into you know greater things and something that I should keep on exploring yeah so that's the way I was thinking at that particular point and you know, just uh, the greatest thing that I've always valued is the, the leadership of my pastor. Because he's my, my biggest mentor with regards to everything in life. So upon consultation, he, he connected me with a brother in Ireland, Brother George Kesho. And we got to talking about music. He's a, a really great person. And we got to talking about music uh, and a lot of these things. And that's another junction now where I realized, as he showed me, that being a musician or a singer, songwriter within the message means, actually means much more than what I had, uh, what I had initially thought. Because, yeah, I just thought, you know, you're writing music, uh, you know, basing off of the Bible, you know, things like that. But it actually showed me now that the message that we have received, uh, it can actually be turned into music. The same way preachers, you know, draw inspiration for it from it and preach a sermon, that's the same way a songwriter can draw inspiration from it as well and write a song and yeah that really changed my perspective to know that there are all these messages that the prophet preached right and within all those messages there is a uh, something hidden in there that can actually be turned into a song for the benefit of the bride 
and wow, I had never, I had never imagined such a thing before. You know, because here and there I would drop, I would drop some little things from you know the message, but never really uh, uh, the way in which he was explaining, right? So yeah, the more I talked to him, the more he showed me these things the more now my ministry began to uh, take a different direction from what uh, it initially had and yeah and when he told me i had no idea <laughs> whatsoever how i was going to do it or how i was going to begin but you know we just prayed about it he was praying for me and i was praying as well and you know just trying to write 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 and there's a song that i wrote i haven't released that one yet yeah but then, during that time, that's when, you know, I wrote the song on the other end of the aisle. Yeah, I think uh, there's an interview where I really explain how I wrote that one. But yeah, I started writing songs like that on the other end of the aisle. You know, John 3.16, um, Come Up Higher. You know, those songs where you really see that this is now the message, you know. Yeah, and... It, it's really something that God really had to help me with now to get into that channel, you know, where you are setting yourself under the ministry of the prophet, you know. Like the prophet says that uh, a people in the land whom under their prophet messenger shall be the final voice to the final age. So, yeah, I think that's, that's exactly what it is, you know, laying yourself under the message of the hour and drawing you know inspiration from that channel you know and seeing how how the lord leads with regards to that yeah so that that was really a, a junction where my songwriting had to change even the way that i saw the ministry and what we were doing right it had to change as well so yeah um but after that now which brings me to the the present stage of my ministry and probably the main reason why I made this video is uh, after I had released all those songs right which I thought would be highly beneficial to the bride there came now a time uh, what I would call perhaps a juniper tree experience where I was discouraged you know, looking at the at the nature of content I was now releasing and the engagement it was getting or, you know, the appreciation it was getting, you know, uh, yeah, it was something really, really discouraging and really challenging, you know. To think that the very people who are supposed to be accepting this, you know, who are supposed to be happy that, you know, uh, I'm, 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 I'm bringing such content, you know, uh, it looked like they were staring into space, you know, and not paying attention or not giving any regard whatsoever to it. Yeah, because to a certain extent, there are those who appreciate it, right? But the impact that I thought it would have was definitely uh, not what I experienced. Or perhaps I set my expectations too high for what this, you know, new ministry would mean. Yeah, and that's what happened. And I was so discouraged, you know. Uh, and it reminded me at the time. The prophet had gone through something similar when he had preached the seals and it seemed as though the people to whom he had brought the seals the people who were supposed to get it the christian community who were supposed to really you know resonate with that message they weren't accepting that message it looked like they were rejecting that message it looked like they were ignoring it and the prophet was so discouraged and you know and said if they won't hear my message then they don't have to yeah and that is sort of like the the attitude i took as well you know to say well if people won't really listen to the songs or you know get help by them uh then they don't have to <laughs> you know 
So that's the reason why uh, in the previous interview I announced that we were taking a break, you know, from releasing music. It was because of that. That was the main reason, of course, among others uh, that I cannot share. But that was the main reason, you know. And the Prophet got to that place where, yeah, he, he, he didn't want to be involved, you know, with that community any longer, right? He wanted to go into the wilderness and, and be a guide, you know, and he wanted to trap his wife there. And that's when the angel came and said, you have lost the feeling for the people. You've forgotten the call. You've forgotten why I called you, right? And they say, no, I just want to, you know, go into the wilderness, be a real prophet, you know, like the prophets of old who will just come uh, with a, a message and then go back into the wilderness. And then the angel of the Lord said, um, you are called to a much higher office than that. And then that's when he's shown uh, the seven peaks, you know, which were in representation of his name, you know. And, and, and the angel says it was an everlasting sign specifically for him for that particular hour wherein he was discouraged, right? And then after that, he speaks of, you know, the tongues that were interpreted uh, when that brother would say, this could be the, the 23rd chapter of Revelation. And he broke into tongues and it was interpreted. That's where there comes the, the, the song, I will walk this path because you have chosen the narrow path and the hard way, you know, a great portion of heaven is waiting for you. And that's how the prophet really came out of that complex. Yeah, so I think that is what had happened to me, really. I'd gotten into that complex of if they don't, they don't want to listen, you know, then they don't have to. Um, I'll just... <laughs> I was just maybe remain a song leader, you know, and uh, just see how it goes. But yeah, the Lord really had to turn me around. Yeah, he had to turn me around and show me that uh, really the reason why he called me was not so that, you know, people would accept me or, you know, that I would get much recognition or, you know, all those kinds of things, but it was because there was somebody out there who needed it, right? The seals went broken for the entire supposed Christian community, but they were broken for the bride. And those were the people, you know, to whom Eliezer was sent. And yeah, in no way am I, you know, equating myself to the prophet, but I'm just relating to an experience that he had you know, to say that um, in as much as I may have uh, my own ministry, but it isn't for everyone. And I've come to accept that now. So the present stage, I would say, of my ministry is that I'm returning back to the field and doing the best that I can for my Lord. And whoever is going to be blessed by that, praise the Lord. Whoever is not going to be, then it's still all right. But I have a solemn duty to fulfill the purpose for which he sent me. It was really selfish, you know, to think that I could abandon a ministry um, like that and a gift which does not even belong to me. But now I realize that the gift is an owner, the life itself as well is an owner, and I owe it to him. I owe it to the Lord Jesus to really see this through with everything that I have. So, yeah, because after that, the prophet says that there's always someone out there, right? Like the message. It might not be for everyone, but it's for someone. So, yeah, that's the attitude I'm taking as well to say that the ministry might not be for everyone, but it's for someone. So, by reason of that someone. Yeah, I'm stepping back into the ministry. I'll be releasing more songs and doing everything I possibly can to give whatever he gives me, you know, to put out whatever he lays on my heart to put out, you know. So 
I hope this has been uh, an insightful interview. Uh, and yeah, I promised I would do a questions and answers, but I, I want this message to really uh, go across as it is. And I'll probably do uh, questions and answers in the next video. But for now, yeah, this is what I have to say concerning the present stage of my ministry. I'm so appreciative of the people who have stood by me up until this moment, up until this time. Everyone we supported in whatever way, shape or form. May God really bless you and look forward to more. Thank you.